Today on Follow the Compass North, we're going to be unboxing the American Heritage Fire Piston Kit. We have the part number here, instructions on the back, and a pretty run-of-the-mill cardboard box. Might use this in our fire starting as we go along. Feels like there's a nicer box on the inside. Looks like a brushed aluminum or stainless steel. It says here that it has charred cloth inside and that we can use this box for creating more charred cloth. Now charred cloth is just cotton that has been heated up so that you have fuel and you have heat but you don't have any oxygen and that doesn't allow full combustion, doesn't allow it to turn into fire but it makes a very nice uh, tinder source we'll see as we open this up. I like this little kit here. If we're using it for charred cloth it's going to get really dirty really quickly. You can use some stainless steel to brush it up and keep it functional. Fire piston right up on top. Uh, the fire piston here if it's a nice one should have a threaded side. Yes. And the piston side. There we go. If you don't have this threaded vent here you will have a hard time storing this in your pack or in this in your fire kit because as you compress it a good fire piston should rebound and that's a really good sign for us looks like it's got two o-rings which is nice brass construction aluminum milled body and a nice little setup hold it for a bit longer see if it leaks any air seems to be pretty good I like that. If we get a little bit of silicon grease on there, lube that up a little bit, that'll help us out. Let's see what else we have here in the kit. Uh, first thing I see here is jute. Uh, jute is basically hemp line that has been pulled apart or spun out into this fibrous material. I'm going to use that little piece right there. Might get away with a little bit more. When using a fire piston set or any friction or compressed type of fire system, you want to have quite a bit of tinder so you do not waste that ember that you get. Oh, looks like we have a little bit of uh, O-ring grease, so we'll use that. O-rings, there's the charred cloth right there, charred cotton is another way to say that. I find cotton works the best because it's a natural fiber, you heat it up. You don't let out oxygen in there so it doesn't combust and you get this very fragile but very combustible tinder. I don't want to open this yet because it'll start absorbing moisture. In fact, the jute is probably absorbing moisture already. We're a little more forgiving with our secondary tinder though than we are with our primary tinder. It's like a just standard lanyard, 550 cord. There's a marker line. The red line in the 550 there tells me that this is high quality. That's a quality control or a manufacturer uh, or maker's mark line that'll tell you who makes it, uh, when it was made, maybe even a lot number on the nicer quality. Uh, if you don't see that other colored inner core line, you might be dealing with an off-brand or a cheaper 550 or paracord. This looks to be like really nice stuff. And I think the rest is just more cotton or woven fiber. Looks like it's a tight weave cotton almost like a burlap that's really nice because what we're going to do here is we're going to take this maybe put some more in there close it up as tight as we can throw this in the base of a moderate fire let it heat up char the rest of that cotton and give us this awesome tinder to use in the future might even be able to resurrect this with a little bit of uh, steel wool and use it for future uses as well set that off to the side now I'll start off by saying that the fire piston is not a great way of making a fire. It is a cool way of making a fire and we'll be using it today by the end of this video to get flames. However, if I need a fire in the wilderness, it's going to be a survival situation or a recreational situation where I don't want to be frustrated by using this 30 or 40 times or if I'm in the rain where it's just not going to work because my tinder's absorbing moisture too quickly. I'm going to have a hard time. So I keep this for instructional purposes. I keep it because it's cool. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun thing to have out in the woods, but it's not something I'm going to rely on for safety. For safety, I throw a pack of everyday big lighters into the bottom of my pack because nothing beats creating fire at the push of a button. 
That being said, we're going to be time lapsing the middle of this video because when I'm compressing this and trying to create that ember, uh, it's going to take some time. It's going to uh, probably take 30 or 40 attempts just to warm up the tinder and get a good uh, ember. If we get it sooner than that, then we're, we're having a good day. Place that right here. Going to get a little bit of this charred cotton, charred cloth, depending on who you're talking to. We're going to place a section of this into my nest to expand my initial ember or coal, depending again on who you talk to. Put the rest away pretty quickly so it doesn't absorb that moisture. And then the end takes only the tiniest piece, yeah, quarter inch by quarter inch piece. And you don't want to jam it in there, make it complicated, just something very, very light. And then we're going to place this in with one O-ring. One o we're going to put it vertical like this and then slam down, check for ember. Unlikely to get it on the first few tries. So we're gonna go ahead and time lapse. So, we have our coal, we have our ember. This is where people tend to rush, and you don't need to. If you don't blow on this, it's not going to spread too much or too quickly. We're going to wrap it in the jute and then aerate it. There you have it. 